Chapter 12 The Robe The robe of the magician may be varied according to his grade and the nature of his working. There are two principal robes, the white and the black, of these the black is more important than the white, for the white has no hood. These robes may be varied by the addition of various symbols, but in any case the shape of the robe is a tower. The general symbolism which we have adopted leads us, however, to prefer the description of a robe which few dare wear. This robe is of a rich silk of deep pure blue, the blue of the night sky, it is embroidered with golden stars, and with roses and lilies. Around the hem, its tail in its mouth, is the great serpent, while upon the front from neck to hem falls the arrow described in the vision of the fifth ethire. This robe is lined with purple silk on which is embroidered a green serpent coiled from neck to hem. The symbolism of this robe treats of high mysteries which must be studied in Liber CCXX and Liber CXVI, but having thus dealt with special robes, let us consider the use of the robe in general. The robe is that which conceals, and which protects the magician from the elements, it is the silence and secrecy with which he works, the hiding of himself in the occult life of magic and meditation. This is the going away into the wilderness which we find in the lives of all men of the highest types of greatness. And it is also the withdrawing of one's self from life as such. In another sense it is the aura of the magician, that invisible egg or sheath which surrounds him. This aura must be shining, elastic, impenetrable, even by the light, that is, by any partial light that comes from one side. The only light of the magician is from the lamp which hangs above his head, as he stands in the center of the circle, and the robe, being open at the neck, opposes no obstacles to the passage of this light. And being open, and very wide open, at the bottom, it permits that light to pass and illumine them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death.